Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about WordPress.com and what it's like to host at WordPress.com. If you've never seen WordPress.com before, it's quite the time to be covering WordPress.com and automatic products in today's climate. But this is something I had on the docket for a while now, and I wanted to show off some of the differences, at least in the month of October, in the year of 2024, of WordPress.com versus self-hosted WordPress. Let's dive right in. Let's dive into one of the nice little Easter eggs of WordPress.com using a feature that I love, the command palette, something I've been waiting for to uh, use across self-hosted WordPress.org admin screens for a while now. Where is it in WordPress.org land? It's here in WordPress.com. You can hit Command K at any point to pull up the command palette to navigate to different areas of your WordPress website. I can start to create a new post or do certain admin tasks, do things in Jetpack. Um, I love the command palette. It's growing on me these days, and I wish I had it across all of <clears throat> my self-hosted WordPress installs. Sadly, not there yet, but on .com, it's here which will lead me into one of the biggest differences and one of the things you may or may not appreciate from WordPress.com hosting environment. Maybe you're a freelancer or an agency owner and you need things like staging, um, performance reporting, you know, global administration of all of your sites. WordPress.com has that now. If we go into our um, hosting overview page, that'll show us all of the sites we have on WordPress.com and being able to punch into each and every one of them to do some more global administrative tasks. Okay, here we are in the uh, dashboard overview of your hosting account. Now, this will list all of your hosting uh, accounts that are attached to your main account on WordPress.com. So you can manage a bunch of client sites here on WordPress.com or a collection of your own sites that you have. But if we call our attention to uh, the primary screen of our hosting overview, this is what it looks like. It's going to give you your basic overview of business plan, how much storage, how much bandwidth you're using, you know, the typical stuff uh, that you're going to get out of any web host, really, which primary domains you have, and then quick jumps to some other areas. Things that they've really improved upon, if you're a developer, you can sync up GitHub for deployments to your WordPress.com account. I think I covered that on the WP Minute a while ago when it uh, first came out. Uh, you can monitor your site and see the performance of the server, uh, the responses, and a bunch of other stuff that might help you debug why things are uh, going the way they are. There's a logging environment. You'll see I have some warnings here, uh, but you have your typical logs, which from the word, older WordPress.com days, you just didn't have access to. Now you have that in their hosting site. The staging features actually work really well. Um, staging, I'm assuming, has gotten a lot better for web hosts these days. Uh, but I remember back five, six years ago, staging was like a selling point. It was a critical feature. It was a differentiator across the board for a lot of web hosts. Now you can spin up staging sites, and you can see I have one already for this um, particular website. And I can uh, choose to sync between staging into production. So if I build some stuff out on staging, I want to bring that live. I can select this uh, the theme, the plugin, the media uploads, the content, uh, or additional web root uh, files and directories. Or if I'm going the other way, like I want to take just the production site and throw it over to the staging, I can click the synchronize button and that'll handle it for me. And lastly, server settings, you can set up your typical access to uh, administer the server through SFTP or SSH, PHP MyAdmin, clear all caches, sort of all of that administrative stuff that you're uh, used to doing in many managed WordPress hosting environments. All of this to say is uh, I appreciate the direction WordPress.com is going in, and it's starting to look more and more like a typical managed WordPress competitor, where in the past it was just like a big multi-site, <laughs> literally. And, uh, you know, you were just logging into WordPress and doing your thing. You didn't have all of these tools and features that you get from the larger hosting ecosystem. So one of the reasons why I move this site over to WordPress.com is to not only get the experience and try to understand what Automatic is doing with WordPress.com as somebody who critically covers the space, but to also see what they're doing to compete with sites like a ghost and uh, a Substack or any kind of like newsletter site who is, you know, enticing you to grow a newsletter, maybe monetize your content. And this is where things kind of really start to fall flat for the experience side uh, of WordPress.com for that particular use case. Jetpack comes with uh, my particular web hosting plan and a lot of the features for subscribing to a newsletter, 
uh, stats, all that fun stuff that you would get in a ghost in a Substack environment. They're there in Jetpack, but they're just not front and center for the WordPress.com experience. In fact, we're just looking at a typical WordPress dashboard right here. I have the little Jetpack widget loading here, but it's not really uh, en enabling me as a you know newsletter author and somebody trying to monetize uh, a, a content site. It's not driving home those data points for me. If we go into Jetpack, it's still just a, pretty much a standard Jetpack experience. We have our stats to the site. We have the different features that are turned on and active. And, and by the way, some of these things are great. One of the, another reason why I wanted to run on WordPress.com uh, was to get things like VaultPress to have a little bit of safety on backing things up and VideoPress, which I plan <laughs> to be using pretty soon. VideoPress is actually one of my favorite automatic products. Uh, the video hosting side, I think, is an untapped market for automatic and WordPress.com. VideoPress allows you to host uh, videos instead of going to YouTube and then embedding it back onto your site. You can host those video files, leveraging the Jetpack and the, and the WordPress.com slash automatic CDN network that they've built for so many years um, to deliver fast loading video files. Uh, but it's not; st it's still not built for that, um, you know, publisher in mind. If I go to stats, uh, the overall stats, it's showing me the page views and the typical Jetpack stats you're going to get uh, when you go uh, and run Jetpack. Let's say on your own self-hosted site, you can look at your top content, and you can go to another subscriber screen <laughs> that shows you the growth of your newsletter stats here. Still, I would really like this stuff to be front and center to the immediate like login of wordpress.com. Maybe that's where they're uh, headed with this kind of stuff. I'd really like to extract these stats and show this front and center uh, for somebody who's focused on um, the different verticals of running a WordPress website. Okay, let's talk about themes and plugins on wordpress.com. I'm running uh, the rock based theme on this particular site right now. Uh, it's an independent third party theme. Download, purchased it, downloaded it, installed it myself. You can do that with WordPress.com if, if you didn't know that already. And when we click into Theme Showcase, this is something that is specific to WordPress.com. This is WordPress.com's uh, theme marketplace, if you will, not to be confused with the plugin marketplace, which we'll look at in a moment. But there are specific WordPress.com themes here available for download uh, for free or for paid. Um, this is something that is another advantage to folks who want to run on WordPress.com specifically for the themes that are available. Uh, I know it's been a selling point for years for WordPress.com, so that hasn't changed. But there's a lot of new themes here that that do look pretty exciting. Um, it, it's not going. You're not going to build these in any different way. You're still using the site editor. You're still using the core features available um, to many WordPress users out there in the world. But the theme design, color scheme, typography, and all that stuff would be specific to WordPress.com under the theme showcase. Let's take a look at the plugins. This is where things get a little bit different, and it's been evolving over the last few months. I can go to my plugins page and see my typical view of WordPress plugins, just like you do with WordPress.org. But they've added something interesting here. They've called, now called it the marketplace. And it used to just be inside the plugin page you could get to it. Now it's its own standalone screen under plugins and then marketplace. And this is where you can search for uh, through WordPress.com for third-party plugins like Gravity Forms uh, that I have installed and running here, uh, but you can buy other premium plugins if the particular plugin you're looking for is partnered with WordPress.com. And speaking of themes and plugins, they have a scheduled updates initializer, plugin update manager. They call it plugin update manager. I'm trying to think of a, a better term for it, but you know they're the ones that made it. They're, they're the ones that know best. Um, you can set up times for when rollouts of updates happen for specific plugins. And in this case, I have it set up for Gravity Forms uh, and Jetpack Boost. These are the ones that were available. So I'm assuming anything that's out of the core plugins that you're installing from WordPress.org, it'll take these premium plugins and, and stagger them or schedule them uh, so that you're updating at a certain time, your team and your company or your freelancer knows that those, up, those updates are only gonna happen at a specific time. That way you can you know, make sure that they're not getting updated on peak hours of a business operating or off hours uh, of, on like a weekend. They have a test URL path where it'll test the page for errors uh, and you can add those in. So in the event it does find errors, it would roll back the updates to the 
previous version that it was just trying to update from. I wanna bring it to the post editor experience for a moment, and I just really wanna focus on one area, and this is one of the benefits of <clears throat> using Jetpack and having Jetpack available in a, a plan like this is I actually do use some of the AI features, uh, which is like generating feedback or maybe improving a title for SEO. I mean, sometimes I click it and I don't use the title, but I just wanted to see like what else uh, is out there. So I kind of use it as like a sounding board. Um, generating feedback, I generally click that before I uh, publish. It's nice to get some feedback back, even if it's AI generated. And uh, generating an image is actually something I use a lot now. Uh, this is a side, side, side project, and I guess this is where AI comes in fairly you know, handy, is generating a quick featured image. And every time I generate a featured image using the AI stuff, it does actually a pretty good job. And it saves me from having to go into my own ChatGPT account and doing that and saving it and converting it and uploading it. Um, so I do appreciate that I have at least that part of AI. We'll just wrap it up with the price with points me. just so you can see them. There's personal plan, premium plan. Neither of those will get you the ability to install plugins or any of those sort of like manage hosting feel features. Um, I'm on the business plan. Square there in the middle is 300 bucks for the year if you pay it annually. And it's going to give you the tools uh, from Jetpacks and going to give you the AI stuff. It's going to give you the video press. It's going to give you vault press. Um, and I think from a publisher's point of view, it's a sweet spot from a pricing point price point, right? I think it's it's giving me everything I need, leveraging the large infrastructure from WordPress.com or the dependable infrastructure from WordPress.com. And it's giving me that familiar environment of, you know, vanilla WordPress with some bonus features there. Um, I think if I were to, you know, if I was someone who didn't want to deal with WordPress at all, like the complexities of the learning curve or all of the features that it has to offer, all these themes and plugins, would I go Ghost or Substack? I'd probably go Ghost because it's open source over Substack for sure. Um, Ghost does give you something that is a little bit more streamlined for that environment. Uh, but you know, if you're somebody who also doesn't want to go into the world of bigger managed hosting plans and you don't need a lot of complex features on the hosting side, this is a nice hands-off um, middle ground, right? For 300 bucks a year, you know that's going to be hosted and updated and uh, powered by uh, the WordPress.com uh, infrastructure. And again, you get cool little things like the command palette is available. And maybe in the future, we'll start to see uh, these things hitting WordPress.com first before they hit WordPress.org. I mean, clearly with the command palette, we see that there. We're starting to see like admin panels inside WordPress.com using things like data views, which is coming to WordPress um, admin experience as a whole. Um, so you'll start to see those things come to WordPress.com sooner. So it's like a a way to get advanced features uh, in a sense. I'm just theorizing here. I'm just, you know, just a theory craft. Don't, don't, don't kill the messenger. Uh, if you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you want more. Let me know in the comments below, what do you feel uh, about WordPress.com? Uh, have you been using it? What are you using for your WordPress hosting needs? Chat with me. Uh, and again, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.